One of the questions that arise whenever you think about America is where did the first natives come from? You've probably heard stories about that or, or heard information about that. Uh, what, what have you heard concerning the Native Americans that were here when Europeans came as to how they got on this continent? Land bridge. Land bridge, where? I forget what it's called, but it was like connected between Alaska and Russia. Right. So, right up in that area. Uh, either that was land or ice, and the perception is that uh, people came across there from Siberia, from Russia, into Alaska, and then came down into the rest of America. How many have heard something like that? Okay. I think that that might explain some people, but I don't think it explains the majority of who of the people that were here when Europeans arrived in the 15th century, late 15th and early 16th century. This is the, uh, the way that's usually thought of people coming down through North America and eventually down to South America. So it was a downward migration from the north. Now, I'm going to uh, look at some things before I give you my uh, uh, understanding of uh, what may have happened. Okay, first of all, let's look at the world at uh, in the area of BC. So, and we know these things from uh, archaeological digs and from you know digging down the earth and finding a lot of artifacts. We know what the civiliz where the civilizations were and what they had. So, for example, we look over here in Europe, you can see where there were people uh, in uh, China, the civilization there, the Turks, the Mongols, and you can see all around the Mediterranean, Greece, and then you have Syria, the Phoenicians, Egypt. So you can see where, <coughs> excuse me, where civilizations were in uh, the years before Christ. Now, if you look over in America, what do we see? We see that the civilizations are primarily in this area and this area, correct? You see that? Is, that? is that pretty obvious? That that's what the civilizations were? All right. Here's another map showing civilizations and how they expand. So we see that uh, from Egypt, civilization is going this way. Sumer, if you took world history, you know that that's uh, the first civilization that was in existence following the flood. And we see Indus, or present-day India, European culture coming out of this. But what do we see in America? We see civilization expanding this way and this way. Now, what might that tell you about America? If civilization, if the other map showed civilization being in this area, and uh, this map shows civilization expanding from this area. And what does that say about where people were living? When we get to AD, just before Europeans arrived, we have different civilizations. We have the Inca Empire down here. You've heard of them, I hope. We have the Maya and the Aztecs here. Now, let me ask you something. I'm going to do my best to draw nothing in particular on the board. Just draw an island. If there is an island that's uninhabited, and people came to that island and landed in a certain spot, right there. If you came back to that island 500 years later, by then people would be living in different locations on the island probably. But where would you expect to find most people living and the greatest civilization of people? Where on the island would you expect to find civilization as opposed to areas which were not so civilized? Devin? Where they first landed. Where they first landed. 
Doesn't that make sense? Because they're expanding out from there. But this is where the uh, central location is. That's where you would expect the, the most people and, and the uh, greatest civilization. Would you not? Unless there's just something really awful about that spot. But wouldn't, isn't that what you'd expect? All right, considering what we have seen on these maps, that apparently civilization started in this area and expanded out, because this is where you have the greatest civilizations. You have you have the Iroquois up here and the, and the Hopi Indians, but you really don't have uh, much of civilization up here. There's a lot of, a lot of different tribes, but this is the concentration of civilization and population by the time the Europeans arrived. And every indication from the other maps says the same thing. This map shows uh, agriculture. And again, the movement of the diffusion, the direction of diffusion of agriculture and animal domestication is this way and this way. Once again, this is where it starts and it moves from there. So what does that tell us? that the, the uh, first people who came here came to Central America, not through the land bridge. But you say, come on, Mr. Henry, all of the history books say something different. Well, they've been wrong before. And uh, I think they're wrong in this case. Now, what's the biggest problem in thinking that this is where civilization begins? and why a lot of historians don't believe that. Well, what would keep them from believing that this is where they first landed, where they first began to live, rather than up here? What's the, what's the major problem, Lahana? How did they get there? How did they get there? So what, what would be the normal way that they would get there? Hmm? On boats, right? So why don't historians want to believe that people came from here over to here in boats instead of walking across land searching after caribou or something? Jessica? Exactly. They didn't think they would be able to make that journey at, at those early times. So they're assuming a couple things. What, what would be a couple assumptions you think? That, that they would have in thinking that men couldn't have gone from this area over to here in boats. What would be, they be assumed? First of all, since they believe in evolution, they have to believe that men back centuries and thousands of years ago weren't as bright as they are today. And so they weren't smart enough to be able to build boats to get that far. Is there another assumption that they may have? When you look at this map, what's what's it look like here? What's the impediment there? It's a long way. It's a long way. It's a huge ocean, right? And that's normally the way we think about it. Look at this map. Uh, maybe we can't see as well on that one. I think we might have another map later. But all the way from, from Southeast Asia over to Central America, South America, there are islands along the way. Lots of islands. There was a man back in the 50s by the name of Thor Heyerdahl. He was Norwegian. And uh, he, he believed that people actually came in by boat. And so he, in order to prove it, that people could have gone that uh, that uh, distance. He built a boat that would have been similar to what uh, Polynesians had back in uh, the centuries before Christ. And he originally he sailed it from here that direction, and he called it the Contiki. <clears throat> and he actually was able to do it by knowing the currents. Uh, we go back. You can see that 
there are currents in the Pacific Ocean going that direction and this direction, that direction. And so if you just get in one of these currents going the right direction, it will help to take you there. The winds will, will blow you. So he demonstrated that it could have been done. Uh, and then later on, he built another boat that uh, sailed back the other way. Here's a, a map of his voyage. So from South America to Tahiti. Uh, people were not very receptive to his ideas. Even after he did more research and uh, uh, did some uh, digging along the South American coast and did some research, and he found artifacts, he found pieces of pottery that were just like the pottery over here. He found uh, fishing hooks that were just like the fishing hooks they used over here. And if you look at, and I don't know if I have a picture of this later or not, I can't remember. Uh, if you look at the, uh, like the Mayan temples, uh, they're just like the, the temples that are over in Southeast Asia. But still, most historians will not agree to that. And I think the reason comes down to what Michaela said. There is a prejudice against thinking that people were intelligent enough to do that. All right. So, another, another reason uh, that I think that this is what happened is that when you, uh, you, if you look at DNA from people in this area, and this is, it's kind of hard to tell on this map, but if you notice that they're showing people from this area ending up over here, but how do they have them getting there? Going all the way up, up this coast, up over Siberia, and all the way down. <clears throat> when, when it's obvious that the most, the, the easiest way to get there was just straight across the ocean. Oh, here's the map I wanted to show you. See all these islands? You don't see that when you look at a, a normal map of the Pacific Ocean. But look, there are islands all the, all the way over here. Here's Easter Island. You've heard of that probably just off the coast. So. Uh, they didn't have to sail all the way from here to here. In fact, what probably happened is these Polynesian sailors, uh, fishermen, they kept going further and further looking for good places to fish. And uh, they just, you know, wanted the next island, the next island, and finally uh, they sailed over to here. Now, it's possible some might have gone that direction as well. Uh, but uh, this is the predominant, because this is where civilization begins, is in this area right there. Here's another indication. <clears throat> Sweet potato DNA in South America indicates that it came from Southeast Asia. All right, do you have any questions concerning the Henry theory of how Native Americans arrived here? <clears throat> Does it make sense? Other people <clears throat> had arrived in America long before the Europeans, long before Columbus. And we know that by looking at these heads that are on the eastern coast of Mexico. These are huge basalt heads. Now, it would take quite a quite a bit in order to carve things like that, you can imagine. Uh, but if you had to pick a part of the world that, res that people would resemble these heads, what would it be? You ever seen people that look like that? They look like Africans. Now there's Maybe the eyes uh, maybe look a little Asian, but uh, certainly the nose and the mouth look like a lot of people in Africa. And so the question is, how did people in Mexico know what Africans look like? They must have been there. They must have come over. And I think that's exactly what happened. I think there were Africans that came over to America as well. And maybe these huge things. Maybe they even took over those areas. 
Uh, interesting too that there are arrows that are used in uh, that were, were used in ancient times by uh, the people living there that are made out of the same material that the people used in the west coast of Africa, and they even called it the same name. So there was communication between Africa and America. This is an amazing thing, and I don't. Not, not sure what to make of this, but there is evidence that um, the Hebrew people were actually in America. Uh, this is, it's difficult for you to see, but this is an inscription that was found in uh, southwestern United States among the Cherokees, which looks like an abridged version of the Ten Commandments in a form of Hebrew. Now, whether the Cherokees learned Hebrew, or the speculation is, were the Cherokees actually a descendants of some Hebrews that came over here, maybe to escape Babylonian captivity? Maybe I mean, who knows? A lot of things that happened in Israel over the centuries that might have caused people to leave. Uh, there's two more stones like that. One in. Um, in Ohio and one in uh, West Virginia, which had the same kind of characters. There's uh, that's the one in Ohio. Uh, looks like Hebrew. There's another one. This is in a place called Back Creek, called Back Creek Stone. Uh, the main the main line on this, if, if this is Hebrew, would read uh, only for Judea. Or only for the Judeans. So that sounds like that these people may have come from Judea, uh, which would put it in a time uh, after the separation of the, the nation of Israel into two kingdoms uh, in the Old Testament period. Interesting too that there are a lot of uh, similarities between Hebrew and Cherokee words. So in English camel and Cherokee is Gamili. In Hebrew, Gamal. A dog, Eli, Gilev. Egg is Wetsi, Betsa. Mosquito, Tosi, Yetoch. Turtle, and so on. Uh, the Lord, Adon Vida, uh, Vidi. Adon Vido. Adon is the root of Adonai, which you've heard of. Uh, many of you we learned that last year in Bible class. Uh, so, where did those come from? Who was here? Well, next we come to some other, some Europeans that arrived in America before Columbus. And for that, we go to the Vikings. You remember the Vikings? They originated in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark. And this shows the directions that they went. Some of the uh, Swedes went down this way into Russia. In fact, uh, the word Rus, which is when we get Russia, uh, it really means Viking. So the Russians were Vikings at one time. Uh, and you can see they came on all different parts of Europe invading. But notice that some of them came over here to Iceland. And then, uh, and that was uh, Eric the Red, Iceland, then to Greenland. Uh, and uh, that was Leif Erikson. The son of Eric, Erickson, uh, that went and, and, and it looks like he also came down into uh, what he called Vinland or Vineland, which we call Newfoundland. So there's evidence that the Vikings were over in this area uh, long before Columbus. You can see the years here: you know, 871 AD, 985, around 1000. So we can say around 1000 AD, Vikings were in America. Not only along the coast here, that's understandable, but there's evidence that they also were other places. Uh, this is a picture of a stone called the Kensington Stone. And uh, this stone is in Minnesota. That's a long ways from Newfoundland, isn't it? And yet, 
this is written in Viking letters in Minnesota. Surprisingly, there was also a stone found in Oklahoma that for many, many years, people assumed was some kind of Indian writing. And people would come from miles around to see this stone with all this strange writing on it. One day, a man saw it and said, I can read that. But what, no one's been able to figure out what these letters are. What do you mean you can read it? He said, that's ancient Viking writing. And so he was able to translate it. And apparently, on this stone, was written instructions. Uh, someone was saying, you know, here's our group. You know, there's another group apparently following. Uh, they said, we were here, now we're going that way. And he was able to read it. In Oklahoma, Viking writing. There's another stone that appears to have Viking symbols on it. In addition, after the Vikings, uh, there was a Christian missionary named St. Brendan, who is said to have sailed out into the Atlantic and uh, quite possibly came over to the uh, New World as well, uh, came over to Newfoundland. And, and apparently a lot of Europeans were coming over fishing in the Grand Banks. The Grand Banks is a great fishing area long before Columbus. They knew about it. They were over there. So when we say Columbus discovered America, it's really not true, is it? Uh, he's the one that allowed people in the rest of Europe to find out, but there were a lot of people who already knew that there was land over there. Now there's another part of the world that also knew about America that I just found out about a couple years ago, and that is the Chinese. In 1420 and 21, I think it was, uh, the, uh, the Chinese had developed a uh, tremendous navy. Uh, they had huge ships. Their, their ships make Columbus's ships and the other Europeans look like little rowboats. They were big. They were massive. They had developed a, a system of building ships in which they built compartments under the deck so that if uh, any part was damaged, so water came in, they could shut off that compartment and the ship wouldn't sink. Now that's something that the rest of the world could figure out for a long time. They had a ship so large that the man who did research on this uh, and sailed around the, the world in the areas where he felt the Chinese had gone, in one location found buried in the sand what turned out to be a 40 foot tall mast. Now the mast is, is that big tall pole that the the, uh, the sails are on. Now if the mast is 40 feet tall, what does that tell you about the size of the ship? It is huge. And the, the Chinese government sent out uh, these different convoys of ships in order to establish trade <coughs> with other uh, countries, other nations. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And this map shows where they initially were going. Now, some of these are earlier, 1405 and so on, but uh, that shows you the contact they had all along the coast, southern coast of Asia, and then over to Africa. Now, they went further, though. As they proceeded along, mapping all along the way. They ended up coming around Africa, up through here, and along the coast of North America, on up this direction, up around the north of Greenland. This is in 1420. And then across the north of the Arctic Ocean and around all the way back to China. Those are the first people that went around the world on the sea. Now, what question comes to your mind about sailing north of Greenland and north of Russia in the Arctic Ocean? How did they not freeze? How did they not freeze? Why? They could build fires, didn't they? 
stay warm. That's not the biggest problem of them not freezing. What's the biggest problem? Yeah, because today this is what? It's all ice. How did they sail through there? So how was it possible? <laughs> it would take a long salt, and salt only works till to uh, what uh, twenty degrees. Other than that, it doesn't work. What does this tell you about the climate <coughs> at that time? It was warmer. It was a lot warmer. And we know from other records that that's true. Uh, we know from the Vikings that, uh, and we know from archaeological evidence too, that Greenland actually was green. Today it's not. It's mostly uh, ice covered. And they found evidence of, of uh, vineyards <coughs> in Greenland, Iceland, and over in this area too. So it was warm enough to grow grapes. And it was warm enough that the ice had melted in the Arctic Ocean, enabling the Chinese to sail around all around the world. Now they also Another group, another uh, convoy went around this way and went up the coast of South America. Stopped in South America, <coughs> left some colonists there, and uh, in, in recent years it's been discovered, well actually the, uh, the Spanish explorers discovered in South America some chickens that were native to Asia. How did those get there? Uh, I also found a number of other artifacts there that indicated the Chinese were there. In fact, they apparently left men along the way different places to establish colonies, but they never made it back. And so the colonists just intermarried with the, uh, the natives. It's been discovered that there's a, an Indian tribe in southwest United States that DNA is, can be traced to uh, Chinese. So, they sailed around the world. Oh, by the way, this is a question I, I ask to those who believe in uh, man-made climate change. Okay, if, man, if people's cars today are causing global warming, what caused the warming back then? The Vikings were running so hard on their ships, you know, all that heat generated? No, our planet goes through cycles of warming and cooling. It happens every 500 years, full cycle about 1,500 years. All right. Now, it's possible. Oh, I'll tell you what, what happened. The reason that the, the Chinese never got back to the colonists is that when they all arrived back home, the, uh, the Chinese emperor had been under a lot of pressure while they were gone to stop spending money because he had built the Forbidden City. It had burned down. He rebuilt it, and he was just exhausting their supply, their treasury. And so he was uh, kind of forced to uh, stop spending money. And so when uh, this Navy arrived back home, he said, no more. We're not going to go out, uh, out exploring anymore. We're not going to go out and try to trade with other nations. Uh, uh, we're going to stay here and just focus on our own country. And he had all their maps and charts destroyed. Well, he thought he had them all destroyed. Apparently, there was one copy that made it which may have been drawn by a, uh, a Portuguese a guy that joined them in India and was sailing around with them. And that's called the Pramaros Mupa Mundi. You can see he has a map of the world as he sees it. It's kind of hard for you to see, but this is Asia. This is Africa. Here's Europe. You can see uh, Spain and Italy very clearly here. Uh, so uh, that part that was mapped out uh, became known. Uh, that was in 15, or almost like, yeah, 1459. <clears throat> Here's uh, uh, the Martellus map, 1489, which uh, shows uh, the world as well. Although, you know, Africa is a little bit out of proportion, especially at the bottom. And then here's another map, 1507. Now this was after Columbus sailed, but it may be that he had this information. Notice here we have Africa, and then over here we have land. 
I don't have how big it is, but there is land out here, and that's America. Uh, there's some speculation that Columbus's brother may have come in contact with the uh, Portuguese guy who originally drew the map, because uh, <coughs> Columbus's brother was married to a Portuguese princess, I think, uh, and uh, they copied the map. So it may be that Columbus uh, had more idea about where he was going than what we always thought. It's hard to say for sure. It's speculation. But uh, the, the main point is that the Chinese uh, sailed around the world a couple of times, a couple of different voyages, uh, long before Europeans ever even arrived in America. And if the Chinese emperor had not put a stop to their exploration, um, they would have settled America before Europeans ever got here. And America would be vastly different. It would be more Chinese today than, than European, possibly. Who knows? Who knows what would have happened? Maybe there would have been wars and all kinds of things. Here's a map drawn in 1513, shows Central and South America shores. Well, following all of these uh, different ventures, uh, and many of the Europeans not knowing about them, the Portuguese uh, and the Spanish and others in Europe were, were wanting to get to, to find a way to get to Asia. But what was the big draw of Asia? Remember, why, why did the Portuguese and Spanish especially want to get to Asia? Any of you know? Just Michaela? Trade. Pardon me? Trade. Trade. What did they want in particular? What did Asia have that Europeans wanted. Spices, Spices and silk, things like that, that they didn't have in Europe. And there had been a great demand for that created through the contact with Asian uh, products during the Crusades. So uh, the, the uh, Spanish and Portuguese wanted very much to establish a uh, trade with Asia. Now there were, those products were coming into Europe, but through uh, Italian merchants. Italian merchants would buy them from Arabs who brought them to the Middle East, but uh, then they jacked up the prices. So there was a supply and demand issue that we'll talk about tomorrow. If you have your letter, you may pass it up to Michaela. Thank you.